This video is going to go over my method and in settings for engraving round cork coasters using the Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser and the Lightburn software. As with any of these laser engraving videos, make sure you understand that the settings I use for speed and power may not be the exact settings you need to use in your laser, even if you have the same model. You'll want to make sure to run through a material tester and work out what gives you the best results for your setup before continuing on and actually trying to make the finished product. This first part will show a method of creating the layout and engraving your design perfectly centered onto round coasters without the need for any image editing tools. After we're completed with this, I want to show the results of an alternate method where I made the design in an image editing tool to let me have a lot more control over the opacity for the images and the stroke thickness of the font to help them pop a bit more. I used Photoshop in the version I'll be showing, but you could use GIMP or any other tool of your choice as long as you can control the opacity for layers and stroke thickness of your fonts. So the first thing we'll do here is go ahead and load up the project done entirely in Lightburn. And I'll go through the different layers and the settings and the reasons for the different pieces here. So the first layer you see here is just a simple 90 millimeter circle, and that's the diameter of the cork coasters I'm using. I have the settings for it set to my cardstock engrave settings, which is 1500 speed millimeters per minute and a 50% power. This is my framing or positioning layer. So I'm gonna go through and I'll have this engraven onto the cardstock and that gives me a very visible layer so I can position my cork on it to ensure that I'm perfectly centered every time I'm engraving onto the cork without needing to tweak the framing from the laser or from the cork coaster positioning actually on the bed at all. This may not be necessary for a lot of you if you're already good at getting everything centered and framed up properly, but it was the easiest method for me when I was working through, especially with the circular object, to make sure I didn't accidentally nudge my honeycomb bed or gently move the cork somewhere on there and have things be off-centered. So the next layer down here is an image layer and it's the coaster border. I found that I really preferred the end results when I had some sort of border on the coaster, even if it was a simple line, it helped frame out the design and gave it a much better finished look for me. This layer is set using my dark engrave settings for cork, which is 6,000 millimeters per minute, a maximum power of 50%, a minimum power of 0%, and similar to when I was doing the etching on acrylic in the other video, I like having the image mode set to grayscale. One of the other image modes may work better for you, but just for my purposes and my end results, these are the settings that give me the best product at the end. Going down one more layer is another image layer, and this is for these wine glasses that I want as a sort of faded out background image on the coaster. So for these, I have them set to my engrave light image settings on cork, which is still the 6,000 millimeters per minute, but it uses a maximum power of 10% instead of the 50%. The min power is still zero and the image mode is still grayscale but I like using this because it fades everything else and allows the image to show up behind the font or the text to let everything have a more completed look on it. The final layer there is all of the text for the coaster and it was just created using the text tool within Lightburn. The mode for the layer is set to fill and it's also using my dark cork engraving settings of 6,000 millimeters per minute and a power of 50%. Now, because this isn't an image layer, you don't have to worry about setting that minimum power or an image mode. Everything's just handled by setting it with the speed and the power on there. For the font on this, I'm using a Felix titling for the main text here, the name and the little uh, title piece underneath it. And then I used a Lucida calligraphy font to have a nice kind of more script, fancier text at the bottom of the coaster. These circles are just the Unicode character for a dot. You could also create little circles using Lightburn and Circle Tool and line them there. Uh, you'll see on the finished product kind of what those are. Those worked as a filled in black circle. You see that on a lot of signs and imagery when you have an established date or a started date on it. So 
To set up positioning layers, I'm going to go through and I'll disable everything except for that first circle layer. And then we'll go ahead and send this over to the laser and I'll let you see how this creates that nice framing circle onto the cardstock and then we'll pop back into Lightburn. All right, now you were able to see that that gave us a nice clear circle on the cardstock that will allow us to position the cork coaster and get a perfectly centered engraving. Now that that's done, we no longer want to engrave that circle. So what we're going to do is go ahead and select that and we'll move it down to a tool layer, T1 or T2, and we'll leave it set as the framing component. You can see that right here where it's set as a framing component. This will make sure that it doesn't actually get sent to the laser to cut or engrave, but it is used as part of the origin positioning to make sure that everything else that we do actually engrave is centered based upon that framing component. With that moved down, we'll go ahead and re-enable each of the other layers that we actually want to send through to the laser. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you a sped up version of the engraving process. You can skip over this if you don't want to, but this lets you kind of see how it burns through. If I go and look at the preview for this, you can see it's gonna take about 14 minutes or so to do this whole burn. And then we'll pop back in here and I'll show you how everything kind of wraps up after that. Back in Lightburn, I'm going to go ahead and load up the alternate project I did where I used an image from an editing tool. You can see here it's pretty much the exact same design. I, I did increase the size of the wine glasses in the background and I massively increased the stroke thickness of the font to make it feel a little bit heavier. The wine glass layer in the image editing tool was set to a 20% opacity and then I exported everything as a PNG to let me frame it out. You'll notice this project still has that 90 millimeter framing circle. Once you set it up one time, you can just keep that as a tool layer and then keep going back to use that same framing circle for positioning your coaster on there. But it does allow you to make sure that you're consistent in where your image is going to land on that coaster without accidentally bumping things out of the way. The image here is still set using my engrave dark image settings of that 6,000 speed, 50% max, 0% min grayscale. I use that because that allows it to take into consideration the actual opacity or the blackness level of the different images on here when it's printing them out or engraving them out onto the coasters. So we're gonna go ahead and end out here in Lightburn and I'm gonna step through and show you the finished product to give you an apples to apples comparison so you can see how the two pieces all kind of fit together and some other options you can have for finishing up your coasters to give a nice final product. Now we'll review the finished product from the two different methods. This first coaster is the one created entirely in Lightburn. You can see that that 10% power level for the wine glasses does give them that slightly faded out background effect. And the font on top of it, is a little bit darker. It's not quite as thick as I'd like it to be, even with that bold font setting, but it is still legible and you can read everything on there fine. As you can see on the imaging itself, using that framing circle did allow me to get everything perfectly centered on the coaster. So I really like that method of getting everything lined up without having to go through framing multiple times. 
This one here is the exact same design created using Photoshop. For this, I enlarged the wine glasses a bit, and that's where I set that layer to a 20% opacity to fade it out in the grayscale. And then I bumped up the stroke thickness on the font so that it pops a bit more. To me, it's a lot clearer and gives me a lot better result for the finished product here. Again, though, you can see using that framing circle, the border is exactly the same centering as it was for that version I created in Lightburn. So it gives you the same finished product. So you can make sure everything lines up exactly the same as you're going through it. This last one, it's the same thing, but I want to show you a different way you can go about finishing your coasters. So with these coasters, you can see it's not very thick. It's just a thin layer of cork. It's very flexible. So what I did was I went through and I used that 90 millimeter framing circle to actually cut out some wood to use as a backing piece for it. That allows it to be a lot firmer, gives a little bit of weight and heft to it. And then you can add little pads to the back if you want to make them not slip or anything like that, like you'd get with a cork. It's just an option you have. Uh, the design itself is exactly the same. And again, it's just if you have extra wood laying around, you can really cut that thin piece of wood to give a nice finished product to your cork coasters. So that's all there really is to it. It's just a couple of different ways you can go about design, depending on what tools you have available to you. And you can get a nice centered image on circular cork coasters to make for yourself or as a gift for some friends as you're going through there. As always, the settings I use here for the speed and power for my laser will vary based upon the laser you have and the exact settings for your layout and everything like that in your construction setup. So make sure you go through and test everything yourself before you fin finish anything using it. And I hope this has been helpful for some of you and good luck in all your engraving and cutting.